item of business is a member's business debate on motion 11582 in the name in the name of Fulton McGregor on support for families and missing people. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate, please press your request to speak button now. And I call on Fulton McGregor to open the debate. Mr McGregor, please. Thank you, President Officer. I want to start by thanking colleagues from across the chamber for supporting this motion and allowing this important subject to be discussed in Parliament. And I also take this opportunity to remind the chamber that I am the Justice Parliamentary Liaison Officer. We're joined in the gallery for this debate by representatives of Missing People UK, Missing People Scotland, who have brought with them many of the families affected, and the Moira Anderson Foundation. And I'd like to welcome them all and thank them for their continued hard work in this area. Presiding officer, there isn't much, more, much that could be more devastating than realising a loved one is missing, and none of us can know how we would deal with such, a, such news. It's hard to imagine how you would feel and the impact it would have on your life. But unfortunately, this is the reality for many families across Scotland every single week. I know that members will be familiar with their social media timelines having appeals for missing people. Just in the last two weeks, I've shared police appeals for men missing from my constituency, one from Coatbridge and another from Christon. Thankfully, both were found safe. So it is important, presiding officer, that when this horrible thought becomes a reality, as it does for thousands of families every year, that we have in place full support for those families. Thankfully, the vast majority of people who are missing are found safe and well, like those I mentioned, but this isn't always the case. Presiding officer, I want to reflect on a tragic case from my constituency, that of Sean McKenna, that has inspired me to take this issue up. When Sean went missing in 2016, the reaction of the Cope Bridge and wider community was quite incredible. Hundreds of volunteers rallied to support police in the search. Sadly, by the time Sean was found, it was too late, and his family will forever mourn a much-loved son and brother. Sean's dad raised the issue with me at the time and spoke about hidden costs to a family member or loved one being missing, including the emotional and psychological trauma, the impact on relationships, the ability to work and the financial effect. I want to pay tribute to the whole McKenna family who have continued to raise awareness on the subject of support for families of missing people. If parents have been a force in raising the issue with the press and organising charity events where the money raised has went to support the families of those missing. They were unable to make today's debate, however, know they are taking a keen interest in it at home. Another tragic case from my constituency that members will be aware of is that of Moira Anderson, who went missing in Cote Bridge in 1957 at the age of 11, and is to this day still considered a missing person. As recently as last year, police conducted a search of the Monkland Canal in an effort to find her body, but to no avail. I pay, I pay tribute also to the continued work of Sandra Brown and the Foundation, the charity supports victims of child sexual, childhood sexual abuse, while at the same time ensuring that, that the search for Moira never stops. I know they have continued to support Moira's remaining family and have provided this support over a number of years. I'm delighted to see the work of Professor Hester Parr from Glasgow University, who is working with Missing People UK to conduct new research into why people go missing by speaking to those who return. Around 99% of people who are reported missing return within one month. And, and this new research will be vital in identifying the causes of some people go missing and will help to prevent it where possible in the future. And I welcome the investment from the Scottish Government in this area, training over 400 police officers, social workers and volunteers to help them conduct what are called return interviews. The findings from these interviews are to be fed back to partner agencies to ensure they are providing the necessary support to vulnerable people. And I, I'd ask that these return interviews include family where possible. Presiding officer, this week is the first ever National Awareness Week on Missing People, and I very much welcome its introduction. I do hope that colleagues were able to find the time to drop in and hear from Missing People UK at today's drop-in session. But some of the statistics in this area are indeed frightening. In the last year, 23,000 pe missing people incidents were reported to Police Scotland. This was 12,500 individuals. Of these, almost two-thirds were children and young people. More than half of the children who go missing in Scotland are in the care system. We must do better, and I know that the Scottish Government's care review will consider this issue in the wider con context of being looked after and accommodated and our overall duty as a society towards young people. In addition, there's been a lot of discussion recently in this chamber on the issue of mental health, with suicide the biggest killer of men under 45 across the UK. This is an issue we all must work together across the world to tackle, and I think it's important that we recognise the link between mental health and people going missing. 
It is suggested that somewhere in the region of 80% of people who are reported missing have some form of mental or emotional health issue. And that is where the important research of Professor Parr and her team should provide improvements. If we can identify the cause, we can step in earlier to prevent people disappearing. Presiding officer, as I said earlier, one of the main issues that came to light for me when I was speaking to the family of Sean McKenna was the lack of support in place for the families of missing people. As I mentioned at the start of my speech, none of us can conceivably imagine how we could possibly handle a loved one going missing. It's important that as a society we get this right. We need to take what is being said by those families who have experienced, experienced missing loved ones and ensure that we improve our systems. There needs to be an emotional and psychological support as well as practical help for those who struggle to keep their jobs or even their homes, the hidden effects of a person going missing. I welcome the Scottish Government's National Framework for Missing Persons, which was launched just last year. The recommendations that have come from that are strongly supported by Missing People UK and others, but it's important that we as politicians across this chamber play our part. There are three simple steps that Missing People UK are asking us as members of the Scottish Parliament to carry out, and I'll reiterate them now. Firstly, check that there is a multi-agency group in place with responsibility for implementing the national framework in your constituency. Secondly, ensure that the multi-agency group has considered the response to families as well as the missing person, and this can, of course, then take account of unique circumstances. And finally, ensure that your local authority area has made provision for return discussions and whether these are consistently being offered to both adults and children on return. If the unfortunate situation arises where the person is not found alive, then this multi-agency forum should consider how to best help that family that is left behind. And I'll make this simple additional plea to members. Don't scroll by a missing person report on your timeline, particularly if it is an official police one. Please share it and help find the person. Presiding officer, this framework, framework represents another area where Scotland is and can lead the way. These simple steps allow every member of this parliament to play their part in driving down the number of missing people throughout Scotland and the heartache it causes their families and ensuring that appropriate support is provided when they most need it. Thank you. Thank you. I call Kenneth Gibson to follow by Edwin Mountain. Mr Gibson, please. Thank you, presiding officer. And first, I'd like to congratulate my colleague Fulton McGregor on securing this debating time to discuss an issue which tragically affects many thousands of families in Scotland. I've taken a keen interest in missing people, particularly children, since the beginning of the first parliament led my own debate on young runaways in January 2002 following the disturbing revelation that one in nine Scottish children ran away or were forced to leave home before the age of 16. Upon realising how prevalent this was and how little it seemed to be discussed at the time, I wanted to shed light on it. And while significant progress has been made over the last 16 years, I'm glad we're able to continue the conversation and place particular focus on support for the families and loved ones of missing people. As Mr McGregor said, in 2017-18, 23,000 missing people were reported to Police Scotland, with many involving a person who had gone missing previously. Thanks to Police Scotland agencies and their dedicated staff, working in a coordinated and cooperative way, 77% of individuals are found within 24 hours and 88% within 48, although there is still a chance they may experience significant harm in that time. Unfortunately, a small number of people, 2%, remain missing for weeks, sometimes months or years. The families and friends of missing people experience unimaginable trauma when a loved one disappears, regardless of how long they are missing for, forced to face both emotional and practical challenges, which only worsen with time, especially without access to appropriate support. My uncle Leonard Lawson, a red-headed man in his 40s who always wore a kilt, disappeared in the 1960s and was never seen again. The family simply stopped mentioning him, probably as a way of coping. Nowadays, every effort goes into locating missing people, and rightly so, but similar efforts should go towards supporting those left behind. Along with over 100 new reports each day, 764 people in Scotland are classed as long-term missing, gone for more than 28 days, with some cases dating back to the 1960s. Why people leave home can be multi-factored from bullying at school or work, broken romance, financial pressures, trouble at home. Every case is different. A recent North Ayrshire Police report revealed that 76% of missing person cases in 2016-17 involved a young person under the age of 18, while the average age of missing persons is 16. While we must recognise the suffering of thousands of families across Scotland who have experienced a loved one gone missing, it's also important to recognise the plight of those who may, fo may feel forced to leave home through no fault of their own and ensure there are sufficient services in place to support them, especially if they are under 16 and particularly vulnerable. 
The initial analysis from the North Ayrshire Police Report was shared across child and adult protection committees and suggests that a multi-agency response to the Scottish Government National Missing Persons Framework be considered a welcome development fam for families in my Cunningham North constituency and indeed across Scotland. The aforementioned framework launched in May 2017 aims to improve joint working between agencies involved in safeguarding missing people. It highlights the need to improve the quality of discussions with a missing person who returns, hoping that what is learned will help prevent future runaways. The focus must now be on turning this framework into action. An upcoming Scottish Government consultation will consider how to assist loved ones with such matters as the financial and legal affairs of a missing person. The Missing People Charity, the only one in the UK specialising in and dedicated to bringing missing children and adults back together with their families, already delivers free services such as guidance on working with the police and counselling. Missing People also runs a free and confidential helpline to provide round-the-clock support to missing children, adults and their families. Presiding Officer, while the pain of a missing loved one can never disappear, we want to ensure that effective procedures are in place to reduce this pain over time. Each missing person represents a different story, a unique set of circumstances, another group of friends and family members left behind looking for answers. Families never give up until they receive closure one way or another, and it is therefore important to show the same dedication by ensuring that each local authority has plans in place for dealing with missing people and the families left behind. Thank you. I call Edward Mountain, who followed by Rona Mackay. Mr Mountain, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First of all, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to take part in this debate, and I'd like to thank Fulton McGregor for securing it, and especially in this important Awareness Week. Just one day ago, as we've heard, Police Scotland confirmed that they conducted over 23,000 missing investigations, sorry, investigations into missing persons in the last year. That's up on the previous year. And when you look at the reasons why people disappear, they're complex and varied. Some forget where their home is, some make a choice to go missing, and some people feel that they have no choice at all. When a, first per when a person first goes missing, the sooner the search begins, the better. While you don't have to wait 24 hours to report a missing person, current police procedures mean that the UK Missing Persons Bureau will only be contacted 72 hours once 72 hours have passed. Is this really the right approach? Given that the majority of those that go missing in Scotland are found within two days, perhaps it's time to consider reducing the 72-hour rule down to 48 hours. Yes. Minister. Thank you uh, for taking the intervention. I just wanted to clarify, I mean, it's clear from Police Scotland's website that what they do say actually is uh, if you feel that you have a concern that somebody has gone missing, report it immediately. That is what Police Scotland want you to do. Mr Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you for, for that intervention. Uh, and entirely, that's right, and that's what I'm coming on to say. Because time, as I've said, is crucial when it comes to find a missing person. And I believe that we should encourage people, and thank you for drawing the attention to this, to come forward and tell the police as soon as possible. And I believe we should do more to support families of the long-term missing people. Those that do go missing often leave behind families and friends who only wish to see their loved ones return home as soon as possible and their possessions and uh, homes protected. In the worst cases, months and years and sometimes decades pass without any sign of people's whereabouts. And for families and friends, this is a tragedy that goes on without end. The nightmare is made often worse when families are unable to look after the estate and property of those missing and missing people under Scottish law. That can lead to financial hardship for missing persons with mortgages and investment and insurances all being risked. Therefore, I believe there's a pressing need to reform our legal guardianship laws. Legislation has already been passed in England and Wales and Scotland, I believe, should follow suit. What has become known as Claudia's Law allows families to appoint legal guardians to look after a missing person's estate if they have been missing for 90 days or more. Claudia's Law won cross-party support at, UK, at the UK Parliament, and I believe it's time for a similar bill to be introduced into the Scottish Parliament. Presiding officer, when a loved one goes missing, we want to do everything in our power to find them as soon as possible. That's why I believe that we should review the 72-hour rule, although accepting that it is important and the police have made the point that you should report them as soon as possible. But if we bring in the Missing Persons Bureau as soon as possible, maybe one day, late, one day sooner, that may make all the difference. There is also more that help that can be done for families in long-term uh, situations where people are missing. As it stands, families are unable to look after their missing relatives' estate under Scottish law. 
I believe that that's something that we could change. And the Scottish Government, by bringing forward a bill, could ensure, I believe, in, or could be sure, I believe, in getting cross-party support to make the, sure that a, a law such as Claudia's law in England is replicated in Scotland. I urge them to do so. Thank you. Thank you. I call Rona Mackay to be followed by Daniel Johnson. Ms Mackay, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank Fulton McGregor for bringing this important debate to the Chamber and for his moving tributes to families in his constituency that have uh, missing loved ones. In 2017-18, an astonishing 23,000 uh, missing people were reported to Police Scotland. Many will be found after a short while, but I still find that figure incredible. And behind that figure are thousands more worried families and friends who are left in a state of limbo with a horrible void in their lives following the disappearance of a loved one. Presiding officer, these families must be supported at every level to ease the pain of this unimaginably difficult time. When someone goes missing, the effect it can have on their family or loved ones can be devastating. They can be left feeling angry, depressed, bewildered, and often with a sense of guilt. That's why I'm pleased the Scottish Government launched a new National Missing Persons Framework for Scotland in 18, April 2017, which included guidance and support for families, as well as laying out responsibilities for professionals to support missing children and adults. The organisation Missing People, and I thank them for their uh, briefing, supported the development of this framework and were delighted to see its publication. But the guidance is not statutory and more work needs to be done to ensure that the recommendations are implemented across Scotland. One of the most chilling aspects of those alarming statistics is that almost two thirds of those reported as missing related to children and young people. That is terrifying. We know that missing children are at risk of grooming, exploitation or abuse, or the missing episode may be a warning sign that they're suffering harm or abuse at school. More than half of missing children have experienced conflict, abuse and neglect at home, and one in five children felt forced to leave. Seven in 10 young people who have been sexually exploited have also been reported missing. And at least one in 10 missing children have mental health issues. Looked after children are at particularly high risk. More than half of missing children who go missing in Scotland will be in the care system. We have to address that urgently. Adults who go missing are also highly vulnerable and may face serious risks. As Fulton McGregor outlined, up to eight in every 10 missing adults will be experiencing mental health issues and three in 10 missing adults will have had a recent relationship breakdown. As a child growing up in a Lanarkshire village, a neighbour left her house to buy cigarettes from the local shop and was never seen again. To my knowledge, she was never found. The effect on her family and young son was devastating. The good news is that the majority of missing people are found within 24 hours. However, they still may experience significant harm in that time. And a small number of people will remain missing for weeks, sometimes even months or years. Missingpeople.org.uk uh, provide a number of freely accessible services across Scotland. So I would uh, advise visiting their website for full information on those services. The framework's success depends on local partnerships taking forward the recommendations. Many, if not all, of the recommendations included in the framework rely on joint working, multi-agency, sharing information and agreed divisions of responsibility. So as MSPs, we have much to do. We can check there's a multi-agency group responsible for implementing the national framework in our constituencies and that they have a clear action plan for improving their, the response to missing people. And that's definitely top of my to-do list. Presiding officer, the agony of families who experience the unexplained disappearance of a loved one is beyond doubt. So let's work together to ensure we have a framework in place to at least ease that agony. Thank you. Thank you. I call Daniel Johnson to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Mr Johnson, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too would like to thank Fulton McGregor for bringing this very important and poignant debate to the Chamber because the, the impact of, of this is both serious for the individuals involved, but I think there's just the scale of the situation or, or the issue regarding missing people, I think, is, uh, has been well made so far uh, this evening. I'd also like to pay thanks uh, to missing people uh, for their invaluable drop-in session that they held today. I, I found uh, the, the information they provided hugely useful, and I'd also like to thank Police Scotland for their excellent uh, Missing Persons an Annual Report, which I thought was very detailed and allowed some real insight. But I, I can only begin to imagine what it must be like to suddenly realise that your loved one isn't where 
they're supposed to be, that they're, they're not in the bed that they, they, they slept in or they, they disappeared, they didn't return home from work. What must go through your mind when you realise that and you wonder where they, they may, uh, may be and you realise that you have to make that phone call, that you have to call the police because they're, they're nowhere to be found. And that must have ripples and impacts which last well beyond the incident itself and regardless of whether that person is missing for a matter of hours, days or, or a week, I think the ramifications will uh, uh, permeate with that family. But we must also have regard to the person themselves because there's a there's, a, I think, a, 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 a very much a, a, a common denominator when we look at the types of people that do go missing. We, we've heard this evening that two-thirds of people that go missing are children, but also, as, as, as Rona Mackay was just pointing out, of the adults who go missing, 80% have underlying mental health problems. So the key common denominator is these are vulnerable people. These are, are people who have a, a number of vulnerabilities and issues, and this is an act of last resort and desperation. And sometimes when we're debating these things, it can be hard to relate to why people might do certain things or act in certain ways. But I think we've all been there. I think we've all been in that situation where we think, maybe it would be just better if I disappeared. You know, maybe, maybe I'm the issue. Maybe I need to take myself away. And that's a very raw human sentiment that I think we can all relate to. And I think we all must sort of, you know, have that sympathy and empathy for those people who find themselves in that horrible situation where they feel like this. But this is uh, uh, an issue of, of very significant skill. 30,000 people going missing every year, 23,000 police cases. And I think uh, at this point, I'd also just like to pay tribute to the police because it's, it's the police who are at the very forefront of, of locating these people, making that effort, in making sure that no stone is left unturned and finding that missing loved one. And it does take up a huge proportion of their time. Indeed, researching for, for, for this debate this evening, I was quite taken aback to discover that Edinburgh was the area with the highest number of cases last year, 3,300. And I think the call this evening is to follow this up, and I'm certainly going to follow up with my local police division and uh, uh, local council, just to look at why that might be the case. But the other key thing that strikes me about this is, is the number of repeat disappearances of 25% of all investigations, according to the police report, are for people who've been missing for 10, uh, have been missing 10 separate occasions. And one in two people have gone missing before. So I think this underlines the challenge. And I think we must make sure that our services are in place to make sure that, that we do everything we can to not just track down missing people, but to find out why they are going missing. And especially on that first occasion, that first occasion when that person is found and brought home, that we really make sure that we, we delve into that and put right those issues, those factors that led them uh, to do that. Um, and I think we must welcome the Scottish Government's uh, framework. It has uh, been a, a very significant step forward. But let's also listen to the missing people's ask, sort of asking for local action plans, support for families, and looking at return discussions. But let's, on one final note, while very much the focus should be on what we do to get people home and how we do that, and the 99%, let's also just remember about the 1% of those very tragic circumstances where those people never come home. And my thoughts certainly, uh, and as a final note, are with those people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Johnson. I call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Gordon Lindhurst. Ms McGuire, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful to my colleague Fulton McGregor for bringing the important topic of support for families of missing people to the Chamber of our Scottish Parliament. I'd also like to thank Missing People Charity for their briefing in advance of this debate. And from the outset, let anyone affected by the topic know that missing people are on hand to help missing people and their families 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and they can provide free and confidential support by phone, text or email. Their number is 116000. I'm happy to commit to the asks they have of MSPs as were laid out by Fulton McGregor in his opening speech. I'll certainly see what multi-agency work is going on in Ayrshire and how implementation of the national framework is progressing. Happy to raise support for families and of course refer any constituents with missing loved ones to the Missing People's Helpline 116 000. 
the ask of a revised system for legal guardianship, which is simpler, lower cost and accessible for families, also seems sensible and the right thing to do. And I'm happy to support that also. I look forward to working with missing people and with colleagues across the chamber in the coming months to help ensure that all families of missing people receive the best help and support. As has been mentioned, 23,000 missing episodes were reported to Police Scotland in 2017-18. Almost two thirds of those reports related to children and young people, with looked after children being particularly high risk. <coughs> children and young people can go missing for a number of reasons, unhappiness at home or in a placement, abuse, neglect or child sexual exploitation. According to the Children's Society, one in six young runaways end up sleeping rough. One in eight resort to begging or stealing to survive, and one in 12 are hurt or harmed as a direct result of running away. Some children and young people may feel they have no choice but to go alone, and they take huge risks on the street, begging or stealing to survive or resorting to drugs and alcohol. They're at risk of grooming by adults who later exploit and harm them. More than half the missing children in Scotland will be in the care system. All of us in this place are corporate parents to our care experience children and young people here. And as such, we should be paying really close attention to the quality of relationships that are experienced in our care system. We need to understand better and address more quickly the things that might push young people away from their home environment or indeed leave them vulnerable to being pulled from it by adults seeking to exploit them. I think listening to and acting on the voices at the heart of um, the care review can really help us do that. Um, Police Scotland have already been mentioned and I did have a, a quick look at their site when I was um, before, before the debate and it's clear they, they do direct people to missing people. They are doing part of the, of, of the ask already. And it's clear that they take every report really seriously. Um, they mention on their site that most people who go missing return within 48 hours. Um, however, just to reiterate again, because I think it's really, really important, you don't have to wait for 24 hours before reporting someone missing. If someone you care about or are worried about goes, then contact them um, as, soon as, as soon as you wish to. If in an emergency in 999 um, and in other circumstances on 101. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. Call Gordon Lindhurst, then I move to closing speech. Mr. Lintas, please. The knock at the door, the police officer standing there, the dreaded moment so many people fear, but sometimes there is no knock at the door, and who can say what is worse? But to not know what has happened to someone is surely one of the worst possible experiences in life. In Scotland, the reports of missing people are up a thousand in the last year, and there may be many, many reasons for going missing. But every effort needs to be made to understand why and how to prevent it happening in other people's lives. In 2016 to 17, almost 20% of investigations were in Edinburgh, the largest number of any council in Scotland. Some of these statistics are shocking. For example, 62% of investigations involve children. But the fact that one in six young people who go missing overnight sleep rough or with strangers is a frightening statistic and tells us of their vulnerability. More than half of people reported missing have been previously missing. The National Missing Persons Framework for Scotland focuses on engaging with people who have returned to find out why they went missing and how to prevent it again in the future. This is welcome. Police Scotland so often go the extra mile to find people and return them to their families. But return interviews are key in preventing further instances of the same people going missing, and doing so through collaborative working between agencies, government, police and others. I hope that we can begin to see the number of cases decreasing rather than increasing as they have done this year. Indeed, I would welcome the thoughts of the Minister today on how the framework is being reviewed in light of this week's figures. Deputy Presiding Officer, we must not forget the families of missing persons. While over 90% of cases in 2016 to 17 were concluded within three days, the emotional trauma worsens the longer a loved one isn't found. 
And I welcome the work being done by charities such as M Missing People in offering help and support to those family members. What can often be forgotten is the impact of a missing person on the life that they have left behind. Family and friends are often left to deal with the consequences of bills unpaid, for example, adding to the emotional suffering they're already facing. This is just one area where more could be done to support families. And reference has already been made to the, the possibility of adopting a similar model to the guardianship missing persons bill in England and Wales. So I'm pleased the Scottish Government recognises some of the difficulties and is looking to see what can be done about these. A new procedure could enable a smoother process than that currently available through the courts and make the lives of family members easier in what is a hugely difficult time. Deputy Presiding Officer, in conclusion, I welcome Fulton McGregor having brought this subject to Parliament and I look forward to the government building on the framework of last year. Thank you, Mr. Lindhurst. I call on Annabel Ewing to close the government, Minister. Hey, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to congratulate uh, Fulton McGregor on securing this important uh, debate tonight. And I would also take this opportunity of welcoming uh, our, our guests uh, in, in the gallery. And I think it's clear from uh, the debate that the issue of missing persons is uh, a very important one indeed. And it touches uh, the, the lives of many thousands of people across Scotland and indeed in each of our constituencies. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all members for their thoughtful uh, contributions this evening. Uh, this debate has uh, highlighted just how devastating the consequences can be when a person is feeling low or, or vulnerable. And thankfully, the vast majority of those who go missing do come back safe and well, as has been uh, noted tonight. However, that does not ease the pain for those tragic cases where that does not happen, such as uh, the ongoing agony of the family of Moira Anderson and the, the tragic case of Sean McKenna, both mentioned by Fulton uh, McGregor. Presiding officer, earlier today I met with Police Scotland as they published the missing person statistics for 2017-18 and uh, as has been mentioned in the last 12 months, Police Scotland have conducted 22,966 investigations for people who are missing, the equivalent in fact of 63 per day. Worryingly, that figure has risen from last year. However, thanks to uh, the efforts of police and others, it is important to note that 89% of those who are missing returned within two days and 99% within three weeks. Uh, it is therefore comforting to know that the vast majority of those who have been missing return safe and well, but their return is unlikely to be the end of the matter for the individual or for their family, and indeed the underlying issues which led them to go missing in the first place, as well as, uh, as was alluded to by Kenny Gibson, as well as their experiences whilst they were missing can prove uh, very difficult to deal with if support is not available. The statistics show us that anyone can go missing. None of us are immune, a point I think that Daniel Johnson was alluding to. But what is clear is that more often than not, a person who has gone missing has in fact been missing previously. In 57% of missing person investigations in the last 12 months, the person missing had been missing before. And that at least provides us with, with some clues as to where we should focus our efforts. And I'll get onto the important subject of return interviews in, uh, 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 shortly. A year ago, uh, uh, as has been said, the Scottish Government published our National Missing Persons Framework, and this has in fact been praised very widely, and it is the first of its kind in Scotland, and is founded on close collaboration between Police Scotland, the NHS, local authorities, academics, and a number of third sector organisations. And for many years, highly dedicated people from across Scotland have been working to deliver the best services possible for those who go missing and for their families. And our national framework recognises this excellent work and provides instead rather the basis for a national, more coordinated approach to missing people. The framework has two basic aims, to prevent people from going missing in the first place and to limit the harm associated with going missing. It recognises the excellent work that is carried out on a daily basis right across Scotland, but it does acknowledge that there is room for improvement in a few key areas. For one thing, the framework promotes uh, clearer multi-agency working, and we know that, of course, that this can lead to uh, greater information sharing, pooling of resources, and therefore lead to improved outcomes for missing people and for their families. 
The framework sets out responsibilities and provides for the first time a single definition of a missing person, which is very important actually as a matter of practicality. A consistent approach to risk management, again, very important from a practical perspective, and a consistent approach to conducting return discussions with missing people. Prevention is indeed central to our approach, and we would always like to do what we can to prevent somebody from going missing in the first place. However, that uh, is, is not an easy uh, task, particularly when a person has never been missing before and has given no outward sign of distress to their families and loved ones. When a person returns, as is the case with 99% of those missing in the last 12 months, there is therefore a, a very key opportunity to discuss the reasons for going missing with the individual and provide support where possible. And our framework emphasises the importance of these kind of return discussions and they should be available to all return missing people to provide the opportunity to explore and try to understand the reasons why they went missing. And that is why we have been happy to fund uh, a partnership between missing, the Missing People Charity and Bernardo, Shelter Scotland and Glasgow University to develop and deliver return discussion training uh, across uh, Scotland, which is being delivered uh, for frontline staff and aims to standardise and provide a consistent approach to these key discussions across Scotland. And of course, the timing of such discussions has to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis because it may be that when the person first returns, they are incapable of really talking about their experience and why they went. And it may be that for that person, a bit of time should pass before that return discussion takes place. And that is the approach, this flexible approach that our excellent frontline agencies proceed with. Uh, much has been said about the important issue of support for families. And through our framework, we also are prior prioritizing support for families. For we know that when a person goes missing, uh, the impact is felt much more widely than simply on the individual, but rather on their family and loved ones. And when a person does go missing, Police Scotland will provide support to families, often through a single point of contact to help them cope with what can be a highly traumatic experience. Beyond this, Police Scotland will also refer families to wider support, such as that provided by the Missing People Charity. And as Ruth Maguire says, the charity offers specialist support from their 24-hour helpline and their telephone counselling service. Today, I'm pleased to say that Police Scotland and the Missing People Charity relaunched their Memorandum of Understanding and partnership, partnership to support missing people and their families. This is a very positive development and a real boost for those struggling to cope with a missing loved one. We have been an advocate of these services and have provided uh, some £142,000 over three years to the Missing People Charity to ensure that they can increase awareness uh, and, use, uh, and also use of, of these important support services for those who need them in Scotland. As to the next steps, Presiding Officer, today I did in fact publish a review of progress we have made in this first year of the Nas National Missing Persons Framework for Scotland. Uh, and uh, I hope that members across this chamber, and, and Gordon Lindhurst raised this directly, will be able to have a look at that review and indeed welcome the progress that we are making. We are clear though that more needs to be done. There are a number of priorities for us over the next 12 months. For example, we will further progress the Im implementation of the framework across Scotland, ensuring it is embedded in local authorities. We will also continue to promote the key areas of multi-agency working, risk assessment, and develop more consistency in the approach to return discussions. We will also continue to work with partners to achieve these aims, and we will look to importantly develop educational material to build awareness around the risks of going missing, working with Education Scotland, ensuring that that message is delivered to children and young people. Uh, as we have heard, 64% of missing persons investigations involve children and young people, and we therefore must do more to get this message out about the dangers of going missing and the risks that these children and young people would be exposed to if they did. On, uh, also, I would say, and, and responding to uh, again, an issue raised by Ruth Maguire, by Evan Mountain and Gordon Lindhurst, amongst others, that we are indeed, um, re we do recognise and we have recognised in the national framework the need to look at uh, administrative options for handling missing persons' estates. Uh, and we are currently considering the Scottish Law Commission's report on judicial factors. And this consideration will include the handling of missing person uh, estates. And a consultation on these recommendations is due to be published later uh, this uh, year. Uh, presiding officer, in conclusion, the Scottish Government is fully aware of the impact that going missing can have on the individual and their family. 
As Fulton McGregor said, our National Missing Persons Framework for Scotland provides a coordinated approach to the issue. However, we know that it is the expertise and knowledge that exists across many organisations and agencies that achieve successful outcomes for people who have been missing. Scotland isn't just leading the way in having a national missing persons framework, it has world-class frontline services working day in and day out with missing people and their families and I would wish to pay tribute to them tonight. Without this expertise, I believe that we would not be able to say that 99% of missing people in Scotland are returned. We will continue to harness this expertise and where possible to build on a success. This Scottish Government remains committed to implementing the aims of the framework to prevent people from going missing and to limit the harm associated when they do. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.